One of the biggest challenges on keto is having something delicious, shelf stable, and ready to go at a moment's notice. Well, it's a challenge to anyone not subscribed to Keto Crush. Because in this video, I'm gonna show you how with a little prep, you can whip up something that checks all those boxes and then some. Hi, I'm Mark and you're watching Keto Crush, your channel for eating healthy, feeling great, and looking hot. Today we're making Keto Trail Mix, the ultimate on-the-go snack. But first, crush that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and share this video with a friend. I know it's a lot to ask, but I want to help as many people as I can come over to the keto side. I can't do it without your help. Trail Mix holds a special place in my heart. The ideal mix should be the perfect blend of texture, taste, and energy. When I was on carbs, that energy came in the form of oat clusters, sugar, maple, honey, and raisins. But I'm 38 now, and I don't mess with sugar anymore in any of its forms. On keto, I now rely on fat for energy. And when it comes to today's keto trail mix, the first ingredient I wanna talk about are nuts. Nuts are not only an excellent source of fat, they also satisfy the need for crunch in the absence of something like toasted oats. For my trail mix, I like walnuts. They're high in fat, crunchy, they have a wonderful texture to them, and they're not terribly expensive. Of course, walnuts aren't the only keto-friendly nuts. Pecans are excellent too, with a hint of vanilla or maple to them that makes for a delicious addition to any trail mix. Due to their high fat and very low carb content, macadamias are also especially suited for keto. However, because they are literally the hardest nuts in the world to crack, each nut requires 300 pounds of pressure to open. They come with a high price tag. Speaking of which, if you really want to treat yourself, you could also try the pili nut, a native of the Philippines with the highest fat content of all nuts anywhere. Because these rich and buttery nuts are hand harvested from treetops in the wild, they are easily the most expensive nuts you can buy. Another popular keto-friendly nut is the Brazil nut. However, Brazil nuts are loaded with a vital mineral called selenium. So much so in fact that just one Brazil nut provides 137% of its recommended daily intake. Because too much selenium can be toxic, Brazil nuts are not well suited for something meant for grazing like trail mix. Cashews and pistachios should also be avoided. Both are high in carbs, and if you're not careful, could easily knock you out of ketosis. If you must have them, throw in two or three per bag of trail mix, just enough to enjoy their flavor without risking the carbs. The next essential ingredient to my keto trail mix are desiccated coconut flakes. These dehydrated coconut chips add color and a softer texture to trail mix, as well as a subtle coconut sweetness. They're also high in fiber, low carb, and affordably priced. Next is chocolate my personal favorite ingredient. That's right, chocolate is absolutely a keto-approved food. What isn't keto is the sugar and milk added to it when it gets processed for mass consumption. But guess what? You don't need either to enjoy chocolate. On keto, you have two delicious options. You can indulge in dark chocolate and or stevia sweetened chocolate. Let's talk about dark chocolate first. Dark chocolate, as it pertains to keto, is chocolate that consists of 80% or higher pure cocoa with 85 to 90% cocoa hitting the proverbial sweet spot for me. When I was on carbs and sugar, chocolate that rich tasted bitter and chalky. But when I quit sugar, something extraordinary happened. My tongue learned how to taste food again. You see, I never realized how much sugar was in everything I ate until I tried giving it up. I mean, I was at a point where if it didn't taste sweet on some level, I didn't like it. But now, at more than two years sugar-free, the same once bitter dark chocolate now tastes naturally sweet, almost fruity even. Not only that, but I also find that just a small amount is immensely satisfying. So much so that a single bar can often last me weeks. Should you opt for dark chocolate in your trail mix, be mindful of the percentage you choose and the net carbs per serving. And to get the most from a single serving, be sure to break up the chocolate into smaller chunks. Aside from dark chocolate, you can also treat yourself to stevia sweetened chocolate. This bag is empty because I ate it all. There are two brands that I love, Lily's and Bake Believe. Both make chocolate chips that are 100% sugar-free and in some cases, 100% net carb-free. 
Because they're sweetened with blends of stevia and erythritol, they're almost completely indistinguishable from their sugar-sweetened counterparts. So much so that even my kids can't tell the difference. Seriously, this stuff is incredible and it's a remarkably simple cure for any lingering sweet tooth. The last essential ingredient to a proper bag of trail mix are raisins. Since those are off limits, raisins are shockingly high in sugar. Craisins, the trademark name for dried cranberries, make for the perfect substitute. Wait a minute, aren't dried cranberries high in sugar? Absolutely. That's why now I'm gonna show you how to make them sugar free. Buy a bag of fresh cranberries, cut them in half long ways. This can be time consuming, so I recommend knocking out a few bags at once and maybe even recruiting a helping hand. The next step is to toss them in avocado oil and then sweeten them with your favorite sweetener. I love avocado oil for a variety of different reasons. It has a high smoke point, which makes it great for cooking. It's loaded with nutrients, not the least of which is oleic acid, which alone reduces blood pressure, lowers cholesterol, promotes fat burning, helps prevent type two diabetes, promotes brain function, fights infections, promotes skin care, and helps fight cancer just to name a few of its qualities. And because that's not enough, avocado oil also has a neutral flavor, which makes it completely undetectable in cooking. When it comes to a sweetener, I have two favorites. The first is what's called allulose. Allulose is a simple sugar or a monosaccharide that while rare, occurs naturally in nature in staples like wheat, figs, and raisins. It looks, tastes, and feels very much like sugar. However, unlike sugar, it isn't metabolized for energy. Instead, it's eliminated from the body through urine. Pretty wild, huh? The second sweetener is a brand of urethanol called Pure Cane. The makers of this sweetener stumbled upon the chemical that makes stevia sweet without the bitterness of stevia leaves or the carbs from sugar. It's shockingly similar to sugar especially in baking. Because neither of these sweeteners are absorbed by the body, I don't recommend them in large single quantities, like say a spoonful in your coffee. That's too much at once and it will upset your stomach. However, spread out in a recipe like this one, where it'll be consumed in small portions with something solid to slow digestion, it's an absolute keto must have. Don't know where to find these sweeteners? I've included affiliate links to them down below. After having tossed the cranberries in avocado oil and sweetening them with whichever sweetener you chose, the next step is to bake them at 200 to 210 degrees for three to four hours. When it's all said and done, they look like this. Absolutely beautiful. Combine all these ingredients in a ratio that works for you with a little more emphasis on the nuts because of their fat content. And you get this wonderful, easy, convenient, on the go, energy packed keto snack. You see, keto really doesn't have to be hard if you don't want it to be. You just need a little creativity and a little keto crush in your corner. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and recommend me to a friend. The more love I get from you, the more love I can give back.